<laughs> Welcome back. This is Y254 channel and today is business Tuesday. We are strictly discussing matters business and today on our discussion is the shortage of maize or the maize uh, crisis in the country and with me in studio we have two amazing guests who will be able to put this into perspective. We have Dorcas who is an expert as well yes and we have Chris who is a farmer, a young farmer. <laughs> Karibuni sana. Today. You very much You're all looking you. good. Because <laughs> Chris, you don't look like a farmer. Zizi, Ebu, tell us. Tell us. Ebu, tu ambio kweli, maze. You know, you know, farmers, <laughs> they, you know, they youth looking at you right now, watching us right now. Maybe they experience. If you tell them you're a farmer, they'll be like, oh, no. Oh, no, farmers, we are Zakuja Nabu. This is not a farmer. Mm -mm. Um. You know, actually, it's a, it's a new generation, actually. Uh -huh. We expect at least farmers, uh, when is now agribusiness, that means actually, you are trying to now ma uh, actually, actually commercialize your inputs. Uh -huh. So we expect at least farmers nowadays to be in courts. Because not in booths and, in booths and, and I, I don't know, some <laughs> what, and, what? Um, and, and actually that's the problem we've had for so many years. Like mm. the young generation, we've grown up with this mentality that farmers not on parara, mm -hmm. farming ni kitunabo. But you see, like, it's, a, it's encouraging actually, it's for even someone who's young like me. Guys, you can be farmers <laughs> and like, look all like, like, yeah, like, like that. Yeah, not from a... Because that's its office, by mm -hmm. the way. Yeah, yeah. So I think the moment we change our mindset and know that... Uh, even a farm is someone's office mm -hmm. because so many people generate income from farming. Mm -hmm. I think we're in the right direction as young people. As young, I don't yeah. know young people really fear farming. They go to the university, get their degree, and they're the like, way. no. Even those who pursue courses like agribusiness or mm. agriculture in what, they don't want to go to the farm. People they want the white farm. collar jobs. What you can you tell them, Chris? So, okay. <laughs> and you, you take me to a, a scenario back in high school. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When the actual, actual people are doing agriculture, people used to at least belittle you, you are doing agriculture, whatever. But I, since agriculture becomes is one of the backbone of this economy, actually, mm -hmm. I'd actually uh, prefer a change of perspective, actually, in this sector. Mm -hmm. This is a very vital part, actually. This is very fundamental part of the economy, mm -hmm. agribusiness as a whole, mm -hmm. farming. Yeah. So the perception, the wrong perception that we had in the past that no matter agriculture is a matter of just being dirty, no. Mm -hmm. the, the perspective <laughs> actually changed. Let us do, let us commercialize our agribusiness actually. Yeah, I mm. want to echo mm. what mm. he's saying. Sure. I did agriculture in me as a degree. Yeah. And I remember when I shared with my friends, like I'm doing agriculture, they're mm. like, mm. They, they look like, oh, you're doing agriculture. So there's a course like agriculture. But at least the, the scenario is changing. There have been so many initiatives that are involving youth. It's called Youth in Agribusiness Forums mm -hmm. or other initiatives. Mm -hmm. At least they're encouraging young people, they're supporting them. They are really pushing them like, you guys, agriculture is the way to go. Okay. Yes. So can we say that uh, there's at least technology advancement in the sector that can actually encourage youths, more youths to dive into this sector? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, the next part. When you talk about uh, technology, Mm -hmm. uh, there's um, there have been so many emerging technologies, if I may put them, and the young people are the ones who are exposed to it. There is what we call digital agriculture. We use smartphone, smartphones every now and then, and um, mm. these smartphones, they can be used for the good, not only social media and Facebook and WhatsApp and what. Okay. There are groups where people sell produce, there are groups where people get information, so the trend is changing. The, the technolo technology has actually assisted in agricultural production in so many ways. Only that the young people uh, have misplaced priorities in using the technology. <laughs> but it's actually the very, very efficient ways that technology has helped. Mm -hmm. Apart from information, people are getting, uh, I mean, the major and being information, people are getting uh, information maybe on where we can get seeds at, at an affordable price. There are, there are these blogs and everything on mm -hmm. how we can produce the sure. methods, the procedures, there's also the platforms for selling. So basically we have, there are these agribusiness expos. Mm. So basically there's so many things that are really encouraging. Mm. And, yeah. and, and Chris, you're a farmer. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What, what kind of, uh, what do you farm, like what is in your farm? <laughs> or uh, do you have at least technology advancement or you're using the old techniques? 
actually to do your when you talk of uh, when you talk of technology mm. there's a vital thing that comes to my mind mm -hmm. when you talk of technology we should be talking of maximization or, a, or economies of scale that means we are able to produce much with very few resources okay. and that is the most fundamental thing behind our business so when i talk of technology maybe in a sector like for example distribution sector mm -hmm. The challenge that we get that is that most of the farmers they lack information. There's information asymmetry in the market. Mm -hmm. This in information asymmetry actually leads to a lot of information in search of where is the market, mm -hmm. what are the necessary costs of what are the inputs actually that we need, what are the possible crop and co control measures. Mm -hmm. So technology as a while is is actually a key, is a, is actually very vital in this. Uh, era of production actually. And do you think there will be more maize production this year compared to last year? Maize production, uh, on my perspective actually, maize production depends on uh, a variety of factors. Mm -hmm. We talk of even maybe rainfall as being a factor, maybe the type of soil in that area. Like we get that in most uh, areas that we have most areas in the country that uh, they do it uh, one season actually. Well the areas that are actually Best with the uh, good enough uh, rainfall, like the highlands, there are Kisi, Nyanza region, mm -hmm. people are able to do two plantations. So, according to me, I'd prefer that actually there will be more. Actually, the government should come in actually to actually maybe subsidize the input so that uh, we are able to realize this mass production actually in the main sector. That is very vital. So, uh, inputs and all other factors. Do you think what has uh, do you think uh, the government and other stakeholders are doing enough to ensure there's enough production in the country as an expert? Um, I'd say yes, partly and no partly, mm -hmm. uh, because uh, at, uh, in the 21st century we shouldn't be discussing about maize deficit in Kenya. Sure, because. Maize is the most, I, 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 I do not know about uh, any household that doesn't consume maize. It's one produce that when the prices hike, people on the streets. Mm -hmm. Because it's the major, major food that people eat in Kenya. So in the 21st century, I think, uh, I think we're stagnating as a nation. That um, we've been seeing maize production, maize production. Population is going. The population is increasing. We are at 40 million compared to 10 years ago, mm -hmm. meaning the consumption is going up. But when you look at our production methods, um, I, may, I, I, I will say partly the government has failed us and partly also the farmers have, have had some laxity on their part. Uh, we've just talking about, we've spoken about our technology. You'd find uh, farmers, um, because we've not, had, we've not had an emergence of so many young people, you find mm -hmm. mostly Okay, the trend is changing, yes, but we mm -hmm. find mostly, I don't know, if I stand to be corrected, that mm -hmm. most farmers are still, let me say, they were theirs, mm -hmm. the old people. Mm -hmm. So you see, with changing times, they're still stuck to the old methods of production. Mm -hmm. And those methods are the same ones that we are keeping to repeat that. We, we, want, to, we want to get bumper harvest, but we don't want to change the methods we are using. Mm -hmm. And uh, partly I'd say that um, the government... Because you have the, nas the National Cereals and Produce Board, mm -hmm. which is mandated by the government to take care of the cereal sector, maize being one of them. And it's heartbreaking, or rather it's uh, devastating to hear that NCPB is saying the shortage of maize, and farmers have maize in their, st in their stores or okay. warehouses. <laughs> so where is the disconnect? Where is the disconnect as a farmer? Let just him speak and then I'll give my view on <laughs> where the okay. disconnect yeah. is. Yes. Just, uh, just on Dorcas' uh, point, actually, to just lay more an emphasis, mm -hmm. I'd, li I'd like to actually uh, narrate this situation that uh, mm -hmm. maize production, actually, I think actually it has declined majorly due to the price di discrimination. You mm -hmm. find that most of the farmers, actually, have been to the fields and mm -hmm. you find <laughs> that there's a lot of production. But the, the crops actually rot because there's a lot of price regulation. You get that when we are now trying to commercialize, because mm -hmm. the main aim of production should be actually to com commercialize our products. Yes. To get some money, to mm -hmm. earn a living, yes. to take children to school out of this. So that when the government actually uh, mm -hmm. can call it cartels, yes. <laughs> when some few cartels, <laughs> yes. some few cartels organize with some uh, brokers actually. Yes. 
to the to 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 kunyanyasa i can say the, let me just see that up yeah, please kunyanyasa kunyanyasa ah wakulema yes that is something that discourages people it it actually makes people to shift out of the of the sector that is very fundamental being maize being a staple food this should be actually this, the, in fact this one should be cleared a national disaster <laughs> yeah, okay, you yeah. answer now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, actually, I'm very, I'm thinking this is a noise because this is the backbone. Uh, look at even Nairobi as a capital city of Kenya. The population of here is quite abundant. The population is on the rural areas. When you are going to discriminate farmers, you are going to uh, give low, low payment to the farmers. Th this will actually move them out of the market. So these are very vital. Areas. I think the government... Okay, some, no, you, you do you want to answer or I shoot another question? <laughs> shoot another one. Uh, <laughs> okay, yes. Lucas. There is a, there's this disconnect. Uh, I want to categorically mention, mm. I will deal with NCPB, because that is a state uh, corporation that has been mandated to take care of these small farmers. Mm -hmm. These people are supposed to buy the maize from the farmers. Actually, it's more of a marketing a linkage. They're supposed to market, help the farmers market. Mm. They're supposed to help the farmers in uh, getting maybe fertilizer and mm -hmm. seeds. And they're also supposed to have, a, it's called a, a strategic grain reserve, where, whereby they stock maize in, pre, in, the, in the presence of, in the future, we'll have a shortage. So we shouldn't be talking about shortage. So that's mm -hmm. why I'm dealing with the NCPB. But if you see all these... Um, if you all they're these saying there's no shortage. This is just an artificial <laughs> shortage. Yeah, actually, there are two types of sh shortages. Yeah. There is artificial shortages. There are uh, the shortage that is caused by us human beings. People, the people hold me. Mm. Like someone who is, he said, the cartels. Mm. Someone would go and buy, buy bays and keep them. So, so right now we can say they are holding those maize right now as you speak. Even the farmers themselves More are holding maize because, <laughs> oh, the because of the prices. Giving, but being yeah, given is not prices. making sense. Of which I side with them. Because there's no way in three, four months you've been investing in fertilizer, seeds, looking for, for laborers in the farm. And then when you do your calculations at the end of the month, you're going at a loss. So you'd rather keep it and sell it the way you know. Mm -hmm. Or... Mm -hmm. Whichever way that go will make it profitable for you. Mm -hmm. And that is where we find we don't have maize, but farmers have maize. And again, these farmers, they don't know how to store. In the process of storing maize, you find uh, aflatoxins have infected it. Just you find mo nini, uh, just uh, uh, insects <laughs> have pen nini. So it's another case now. Again, mm -hmm. they're going at a double loss. Okay. Atujauza, mind it, ana. <laughs> it, uh, really, it has been infested by the, the pest and the wart. Okay. So I think it's. It's like a fight, a, yeah. It's okay. a fight. Your fight. point, Chris. Your point, Chris. <laughs> Let yeah. me just give you mm -hmm. uh, an instant. According to my perspective, mm -hmm. actually, mm -hmm. I, I, there's, a, there's a research that says that uh, uh, the economy is, uh, apart from the economy of scale, we have economic advantage. That means that we have a lot of areas in this country that can really produce the maize. Mm -hmm. Yes. But I think uh, some, some sectors, actually, of the government, of the cultural sector, mm -hmm. are actually failing to do their work. We have even the agricultural research institutes like uh, the CALRO. These people, they do research, but where, the, where does this research do? do they go to the ground with the farmers actually to give them maybe of the, what, of the affordable farming schemes? Mm -hmm. uh, a, let me section. interject that one. For CALRO, mm -hmm. I would, uh, I, I partly do research. Mm -hmm. For CALRO, I can testify there are over, there are over 200 varieties of maize yeah. that CALRO has researched on and the trials have been done. Calro uh, in conjunction with CIMIT. CIMIT is, a, yes, is, a, is an, an NGO. You know, we, the government can and trust these agencies actually, these, these institutions, uh -huh. to do their research. But the most fundamental, the most cardinal part is that this information or is not this reaching research, the farmers. It's not reaching the farmers. Mostly, mostly, do this information even reach the small scale farmers? Because we've seen more support is being poured on large scale farmers and small I'd scale farmers are being neglected. I'd say that I'd say that uh, I agree with him, hmm. but not like a hundred percent because these trials are done on people's farms. Okay. When before Calro releases seeds that these seeds can be grown and they're fit for human consumption and they can do well in this and these areas. Because you see, Calro has uh, various um, maize varieties according to regions, right? Yeah. So the, the, the maize variety that, that does well in Kitui, maybe in, taken to Western Kenya, it, it, it won't work. No. So part, part, partly, yes, they try. 
but not to the level that they're supposed to. Because you see, before maize is released to the market mm. and even packaged in the agrovets to be sold, mm. trials have been done. Where are these trials done? First of all, they're done in, uh, in the, they're, they're done farms for okay. cadro, mm. and then to the introduced to a few farmers. So I think from from one farmer to another, the, the dissemination is also mm. there's yeah, that there's, there's that yeah. uh, there's that breakage in mm. information flow. Okay. Yes. And Chris, I asked this question: Do you think small scale farmers get enough support compared to even large scale farmers? Before he says they don't. That is automatic. <laughs> uh, that is they automatic. Don't. That there's a, yes, it is true that uh, the government. Uh, put a lot of emphasis mm -hmm. on mass production mm -hmm. which is also good mm -hmm. but we should not neglect the small scale farmers mm. actually I, pr I i prefer that there should be a platform actually to encourage these small scale farmers to produce more mm -hmm. this one could be tell even the government actually sub subsidizing the input and mm -hmm. maybe some mm -hmm. knowledge mm -hmm. to the small scale farmers mm -hmm. that they can adjust to large scale production um and do, do we ensure there is a consistency in mass production as a country, as farmers? I think uh, <laughs> as a country, the, I hope the leaders are listening to us. <laughs> they are, they because, uh, are. Because when you talk of From food, the young food is the backbone. Yeah. You cannot work without food. Mm -hmm. There's, uh, you cannot work, you cannot be productive without food. Mm -hmm. it, is, it, is, it is exactly something that is quite vital here. Mm -hmm. So about uh, maize, about maize actually, the, the shortage, my, Madam said, actually, the doctor said something about hoarding. I think that is what actually happening. The maize is there. It is there. And the farmers, they are waiting for that price, that, to the, the that boom. Mm. Yeah, people are suffering here in Nairobi. So they, if they keep people on holding on the maize because but of the prices. This is yeah. to blame. The millers are closing down. Actually. We've had cases of millers closing down. Uh, th th there used to be this structure that really worked. If you talk about mass production. Mm. Um... Of the 3.5 million farmers, maize farmers we have in Kenya, mm. that's an approximate figure. As at, I think, 2017, 2018, I think majority are small-scale farmers. Mm. This large-scale and medium, they're actually they're accountable. They are few. Mm -hmm. So we cannot rely on large-scale alone. Mm -hmm. Yes, they have the capacity. You can't compare a farmer who has 100 acres mm -hmm. of land with that one who has one acre. Mm -hmm. You cannot compare them. Sure. And these are the poor given priority. You even saw yourself uh, when uh, the, ministry, the, ministry, the Minister for Agriculture was being vetted, or mm. rather, was not vetted, sorry, was being grilled, mm. that who are these people who are paid? You see, you see the large-scale producers were paid over 200 million, mm. and there are farmers who are crying they haven't been paid. Mm. So the, the, there's this system that it was there and it worked. I don't know if it's still... I, 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 I don't think it's, it's, it's no longer efficient because mm -hmm. there used to be the... Is it the collection centers or the farmer groups that are coming together? You see, if, I, if, if, if maybe NCPB wants 100 bags, mm. of course, maybe let's work with an acre which can produce at maximum between 50 to 60 bags. Okay. So you see, if you get in farmers in such an area and collect, do the collection together, you can actually come up with the mass that you want. Okay. But now we are, we, are, we are like, it's like we are slicing them like... Uh, yeah. We are, yeah. <laughs> the large scale farmers cannot, they cannot sustain the demand okay. for maize alone. Yeah. Even, if they are, even if they have the large farms, they cannot. That is why we still import maize. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, the large scale are the ones who are, who are being paid or rather delivering to Some were even ghost deliveries. Mm -hmm. There was no maize delivered, but okay. they have a rapport. But you, you get. Okay. Yes. We've had cases of fertilizers being so expensive to an extent of which a small-scale farmer cannot afford those inputs, the farm inputs. Among others, what are other challenges facing the small-scale farmers and farmers as, as a general? Mm. Okay. You and also you answer that question <laughs> for me. <laughs> sure, sure. sure. <laughs> yeah. Okay. To based on, uh, on my view. Yeah. We have a we have a, a lot of challenges that uh, face actually maize in this in this case maize farmers in this case, but uh, there are some that I think are uh, just due to some few people maybe sleeping on their jobs. <laughs> like uh, we, we maybe we could talk of rainfall. Maybe that rainfall is something that maybe sometimes you can't control. Sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But there are other things like, for example, in my area, these are these are clear instances that has, uh, is happening in my area. You get that they got sometimes the government. Yes, they do their part of maybe maybe 
giving the inputs like the fertilizers. Mm. Yet there are some few cartels that uh, <laughs> upon the government actually giving out this fertilizer, there are no clear channel of actually distributing it, it to the farmers. They stock these things, they stock these fertilizers, they sell them extravagantly to the farmers. So I think uh, the, 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 uh, the key issue that uh, I could just uh, uh, summarize with is that they need to be an information flow. Mm -hmm. There's information asymmetry. Mm -hmm. The farmer's knowledge. There is no awareness. Mm. Even the, these institutions that actually do research, there is no awareness. In fact, the farmers from my areas, they don't know even the institutions that exist in the areas. They don't even <laughs> they don't the even knowledge know. and awa the knowledge. awareness. For us to achieve this, mm. maybe challenges for the challenges that are there that are adverse, there must be a platform for awareness and knowledge on farming actually. Okay, your final take, Dr. Uh, my final take, yeah. I will echo with him that uh, I mentioned earlier, times changed, and uh, the information carriers are the extension officers, and I think extension died in Kenya. It, in it did. It, 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 it died. So uh, I'd, I'd give, uh, besides information, I think uh, the other one, two, there are many factors, but maybe I'll point out to two or three that the maize import is killing the smallholder farmers mm -hmm. because they're coming at a, those countries that we're importing maize from, they, they have lower production costs. Mm -hmm. So when they come here, our farmers, they come mm -hmm. That is why they keep their maize. Another thing I'll want to mention is, uh, he's already mentioned it, the middlemen and these are the people who make fla uh, prices fluctuate. Mm -hmm. Because when I'm producing, it's 3,000 bob. I look mm -hmm. forward to 3,000 bob. Yeah. By the time I'm selling my maize, it's... 2300 now I hear a mm. 90 kg bag. Yes, it's um, going for 25 actually. So my parting shot mm. is that uh, I think we, st we still have a long way to go and we cannot do without smallholder farmers. We really need, they really need to be supported and the main thing that they need to be supported on is the training, apart from information, there's the training aspect that it, it is said that t over 10% of our production, it's, it's lost up katikati. You see, from the farm to where it reaches mm -hmm. our, our table, we've yes. lost, we've lo we, lo we lose about eight to ten million bags in a year. Wow. So there needs to be training on how to handle the maize from mm. the farmer, even as you take it to the storage, even as you take it to, to mm. the processors. Well, thank you so yes. much, Dorcas and Chris. That, that was Dorcas, an expert, and Chris. Uh, farmer. Well, thank you so much for tuning in to I254 channel today being business Tuesday. Until next time, my name is Miriam Masava. Good night and God bless you.